In this video, we'll demonstrate Playback Pro Plus. With additional features and powerful capabilities, you'll quickly see why it's rapidly becoming the system of choice for professional media playback. This is the Playback Pro Plus interface. While similar to Playback Pro, it is important to note the key benefits to using Playback Pro Plus. First, Playback Pro Plus adds a mixer. This allows for crossfades and direct cuts between clips. This added feature provides more playback options, but it also requires more processing power and disk bandwidth, because multiple streams may be playing at any given point. Second, Playback Pro Plus adds a mode to edit multiple clip attributes simultaneously. Third, Playback Pro Plus supports still images. Any QuickTime supported image may be imported into the playlist and recalled for playback. And fourth, Playback Pro Plus may be controlled remotely over a network using TCP or UDP commands, and multi-sync roles can be accomplished by using our free SimpleSync software and a wired Ethernet network. We will cover these specific key benefits, as well as many others, as we proceed. Let's look at the Playback Pro Plus operator interface. Like Playback Pro, it is designed on a preview program paradigm, similar to a production switcher. Program is what is going to the output, and Preview is what will play next. Preview is always in blue, Program is always in red. Also, like Playback Pro, Playback Pro Plus utilizes two graphic outputs, one for the operator interface and the second for full screen playback. The second output will connect to a video distribution system, scan converter, or directly to a switcher. The preview and program windows automatically adjust to the aspect ratio of the external display. To manually change the output resolution, or aspect ratio if no external display is present, click Setup in the red program bar. A dialog box will appear with all of the resolutions and refresh rates available for that display device. Before we proceed with the Playback Pro Plus interface, it's important to point out hardware specifications for maximum performance. When using MacBook Pro laptops or iMacs, we recommend that all playback media be stored on an external RAID 0 drive array formatted with the largest block size available and connected using FireWire 800 or Thunderbolt. We also recommend flash memory or 7200 RPM internal drives for general system performance. For Mac Pro desktops, at least two additional 7200 RPM drives should be added and striped in a RAID 0 configuration also using the largest block size available. A hardware RAID card is not necessary. The Playback Pro Plus interface is divided into four areas. The Playlist, Transformation Controls, Navigation Controls, and Show Controls. Let's start with the Playlist. The Playlist is a list of files that are to be played back, as well as settings that are saved with the Playlist. The clips can be video and audio, video only, audio only, or still images. Playback Pro Plus is based on the QuickTime framework, so virtually any file type can be played back by installing third-party QuickTime components. However, not all video and still image types have good playback characteristics. For video, we recommend using Apple ProRes 422 codec, which is the best, or H.264. And for still images, we recommend TIFF or JPEG files sized close to the resolution of the video content. For the most current information on recommended codecs, managing QuickTime components, settings for ripping DVD content, or capturing or creating files, be sure to visit the Frequently Asked Questions section of our website at www.dtvideolabs.com. There are three ways to load clips into the playlist. Click the Action button above the playlist and select New Clips. Drag and drop single or multiple files. Or select New Clips from the File menu. Note that both Playback Pro and Plus are non-destructive to the original content. The clips shown in the playlist are only referencing the files. This allows you to duplicate a clip multiple times, 
and set different in and out points, different aspect ratios, and different levels, all without ever altering the original file. To move a clip in the playlist, use the Action pop-up menu and select Move Up or Move Down, or just drag and drop. To move multiple clips, use the Edit Multiple function, also under the Action pop-up menu. Within this dialog box, select multiple clips by holding down the Command key on the keyboard and clicking on the clips in the list. Then just drag and drop to move them, or use the Delete Selected button to delete them. To help identify a clip in the playlist, alphanumeric text can be used in the file name, clip number, comment, and section fields. Just double-click on the field to enter information. For easy reference, the true file name of the clip and its location will be displayed just above the preview title. One of the plus features mentioned at the beginning of the video is a mixer, which allows for mixes and direct cuts between clips. To accomplish mixing control, Playback Pro Plus uses simple transition sliders and fade sliders. These are associated with several functions on the interface. Let's look at how the sliders work in the playlist with the loop and link functions. Selecting loop will repeat the clip indefinitely, or until the loop temp button is deselected, the take button or the kill button is used. The transition slider next to the loop checkbox will determine if the clip mixes back to the start as it loops, cuts back to the beginning of the clip without delay before it begins to play again, or delays before it restarts. For link, the transition slider works in a similar way. Negative numbers produce a mix, zero, a cut, and positive, a delay. Both types of sliders are found just above the main take button. As we have mentioned before, program is always red and preview is always blue. The top slider is fade on take, meaning that when a clip is playing in program and the slider is set to zero or greater, when take is clicked, the program clip audio and video will fade to black for that amount of time. The bottom slider is a transition slider, meaning that it will control how a preview clip will transition to program. A negative number creates a mix, zero, a cut, and a positive number creates a delay. Fade and transition sliders are also available for the link temp, loop temp, kill, and fade in and fade out functions, and we will cover them as part of navigation and show controls. Let's move on to navigation controls. In Playback Pro Plus, the navigation controls are available on both the preview and the program side. However, when a program is playing in program, many of the navigation controls on the preview side will not be available. This is to reduce possible playback issues for the program clip. The outside buttons move a clip forward or backward one frame at a time. The three innermost buttons are Play, Pause, Play, and Pause. Below these are the shuttle speed control and the scrubber. The shuttle speed control alters the playback speed in forward and reverse. Typically, the scrubber is used to quickly find specific parts of a clip so that slates and in and out points can be set. Let's move on to the transformation controls. Just like navigation controls, these are duplicated on the program and preview sides and consist of three tabs, main, Geometry, and Levels. I'll use the preview controls to demonstrate. On the main tab, there are Fade In and Fade Out with 5 second fade sliders, Set In and Set Out, Set Slate, and Go To In and Go To Out buttons. Let's set a slate image. I'll use the scrubber to advance to the image I want and click Set Slate. Now I'll set the In and Out points. and set the beginning and the end fade options. The default time for fades is zero, but I would like a two second fade in, so I'll change that to two seconds. Next is the geometry tab. Like Playback Pro, these settings control the clip's size, aspect ratio, horizontal and vertical positioning, as well as horizontal and vertical cropping. 
While most products only stretch to fill sizing and others offer limited cropping, Playback Pro Plus gives you real-time, infinite control over each clip. Let's change the geometry of this clip. It is 4x3 and we need it to show on a 16x9 display. Note that all of these settings can be copied and applied to other clips as needed. On the Levels tab, you can adjust Volume, Gamma, Black Level, Gain, Saturation, and Playback Pro Plus adds hue adjustments. I'll fix a dark video here by increasing the gain. Like the geometry settings, once your levels are set, you can copy and paste them to other clips, or you can reset them. If the same attributes need to be applied to several clips simultaneously, then use Edit Multiple under the Action button. As we saw earlier in the Playlist section, the user can select multiple clips and reorder or delete clips, but they can also apply Link and Loop Duration. as well as geometry and level attributes. Once applied, click Done. Next, let's look at show controls. The show controls consist of Take, Link Temp, Freeze Temp, Loop Temp, Go to 10, 20, 30, and Kill. Show control settings are not saved and have no permanent effect on a clip. First is the Take button. If the Take button is pressed while a clip is loaded into Preview, the clip will transition and start playing in Program. If a clip is playing in Program when the Take button is pressed, then the Program clip audio and video will fade out, mix, or cut to the Preview clip depending on the Take transition and Fade on Take slider settings we discussed earlier. The Link Temp button is next. In Playback Pro Plus, when a clip in Program ends, Unless the Link Temp button in the Show Controls is engaged, the preview content will not transition to Program. This is different than Playback Pro, where at the end of a Program clip, any clip in Preview will transition to Program and begin playing back. Let's take a look. I'll select a clip in the playlist and then click the Link checkbox. I'll start the clip in Program by pressing Take. Note that settings in the playlist copy down to the show controls when the clip begins to play in program. The Link Temp button is now selected for this clip. When the current clip ends, the clip in preview will transition to program. The Link Temp button has a transition slider, so the settings will generate a mix, cut, or delay transition. The Freeze Temp button will freeze on the last frame of the clip playing in program until the Freeze Temp button is deselected or the Take or Kill button is pressed. The Loop Temp button is also available when a clip begins to play in program. When clicked, it will loop the program video indefinitely until the Loop Temp button is deselected or the Take or Kill buttons are pressed. Again, we see the Transition slider provide the ability to do a mix, cut, or delay before playing again. The Go to 10, 20, and 30 second buttons are normally used for Q2Q rehearsals or to preview transitions and will jump the program clip to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds out from the end point. There are counters over preview and program for reference and easy countouts. The green counter on the left shows the time elapsed relative to the end point. The red counter on the right shows the time remaining relative to the out point. To stop a program clip from playing and go to black, use the kill button. The Kill button uses a Fade slider, so it only has positive numbers, and they indicate how long a fade to black will take. We'll set the duration for a 2 second fade. Finally, the last additional feature of Playback Pro Plus is the ability to be controlled over an Ethernet network. Currently, command protocols are TCP, UDP, and our own, known as SimpleSync. Because we won't cover all protocols in this video, we highly recommend reviewing the Playback Pro Plus user guide regarding network control and protocol commands. Generally, commands can be generated by source control systems. Or, we offer a free software called SimpleSync that will send commands simultaneously to multiple Playback Pro Plus systems. Let's look at how to turn on network control in Playback Pro Plus and the SimpleSync software. I'll launch SimpleSync. In the show setup, it is recommended that SimpleSync run on a separate computer from the playback computers, but for this demonstration, I'll run it on the same computer. 
With SimpleSync open, I'll click the Network Setup button and reveal the connection page. Here you can select between TCP IP Listen, UDP Listen, and SimpleSync. I'll select SimpleSync to establish the connection. I'll name the machine, and you will see the name change reflected in the SimpleSync program window. The list shows the names of the Playback Pro Plus computers that are connected with SimpleSync. The delay field defaults to zero and it may be used if there are playback machines with differing throughputs. Once connected, Playback Pro Plus computers will now accept commands from SimpleSync. Within SimpleSync, there are two methods for sending commands, Direct Command and ClockSync NTP. Direct Command does not require any additional configuration, but if frame accuracy across multiple machines is vital, then ClockSync is better. Please refer to the Playback Pro Plus user guide for detailed ClockSync NTP setup instructions. To load a clip in preview on all computers, simply enter the clip number using the keyboard. The clip number can be alphanumeric, but it must match the alphanumeric numbers in the number field on all Playback Pro Plus computers. The clip number will briefly appear above the name list in SimpleSync. The clip will load in preview, and when the Take button is clicked, the clip will start. The go to buttons are available, and to stop all clips, click Kill. To end network control, go back to the network setup button and select No Control from the list. So that is Playback Pro Plus, the professional solution of choice for playing back and managing audio and video content. If you are ready to purchase, please go to our website at www.dtvideolabs.com and click on the purchase link. The purchase page shows all DT Video Labs products, including the optional USB 40 key Playback Pro Plus controller. This controller can be used to manage settings and playback by duplicating the most often used on screen controls. If you would like to try any of our software, just go to the downloads page of our website for the demo versions. If you have any questions, please email sales at dtvideolabs.com or call 602 687 8507 and you'll hear back from us right away.